Today's sponsor for this episode is Read It and Eat. If there are two things we love in this world, it's reading and eating. Read It and Eat is a box that is carefully crafted with a narrative in mind. They pair books about food with snacks from small businesses. A snack that has to do with the book we are reading? Count us in. Purchase a subscription for yourself or someone you know this holiday season for a year-round surprise that always involves a good book and a foodie treat. The box is $60 or $50 for quarterly subscribers with an option to add on a cookbook for an additional $15. When you sign up for a quarterly subscription, you pick the genre of book you receive for all your boxes. Head to readitandeatbox.com to receive yours today. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to I'll Read What She's Reading. I'm Reggie. I'm Michaela, And I'm Kennedy. And we're your lovely hosts. <laughs> um, today... And this is so exciting because we really haven't spoken much of this together as a group, as friends. Can I make an interjection? Yes. Someone asked us to dis- to explain what Marco Polo is because they're like, you guys talk about Marco Polo and I don't even know what it is. It's a video chatting app. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Whenever we talk about Marco Polo, because I was literally just about to say, the only thing we've really said on Marco Polo is that we love we were loving the book while we were reading it so today we're going to be talking about powerless by lauren roberts Mm -hmm. yes and if you haven't already read this book come back to this episode after you've read it because we're going to be talking about everything from this book it was so good (laughs) so good so good yeah it's so funny because like last week (laughs) iron flame episode we were like saying how you know it's just not as fun when we all are just like oh five stars across the board yep loved it loved it loved it like conversation wise it's kind of fun when we disagree a little bit but i have a feeling there's a lot of things (laughs) we agreed about but i think it's still gonna be a fun episode because there's just so much we can share that just i don't know if you guys are listening if you did not read this book and squeal kick your feet and blush like 80 percent of the time what were you doing (laughs) yeah because that's all i was doing reading this book Uh so (laughs) same all right should we say our ratings should we announce the book club book for next month Oh. oh let's do that first yeah book club book for next month is the nightingale by Kristen hannah mm-hmm switching it up on you guys historical fiction historical fiction but you know what this is a very popular loved book that we've all been meaning to read and when we got on our live today everyone was saying that that it fits the cozy winter vibes so guess we'll find out yeah i actually have no idea what it's about so i'll uh, i'll figure it out i need to go order it because i do not have it it's Cyber Monday today while we're recording this, so maybe maybe you can find it. Hop on. Go get you a book. Go get me a book. All right, back to Powerless. Yeah. Let's share our ratings, Michaela. Five stars. Reggie? Five stars. <laughs> Kennedy? Kennedy? Five stars. <laughs> and that's it for today's episode. <laughs> Goodbye. No, I actually, I have a little section on my Goodreads for like my MVP books, and this book makes it on there easily easy Mm -hmm. i love you lauren and um you gave me everything i wanted in the book and i thank you so much (laughs) she wrote this book for the people for the people Mm -hmm. by the people it was so good i loved it i will say you guys i almost rated it 4.5 for some reason and i couldn't figure out why i started writing my review and i was like 4.5 and then i was like why am I giving it 4.5? And I kept questioning it. And so then I was like, I feel like the banter alone gives it easy five stars. Maybe it's because you were reading, I feel like you've been reading a lot of more, not complex. Yeah, you've been reading more complex fantasy books, which I wrote this in my review. I feel like if someone came to me and said, hi, Kennedy, I would really like to start reading fantasy books. Can you give me a fantasy book? That would be, you know, a good intro i used to say iron flame no sorry fourth wing now i would say powerless i would too Mm -hmm. it's like a simple enough world 
with simple enough power system that's really easy to grasp. She has a great day, way of explaining it because it's very simple. And it's just so fun. It's everything that's good about romanticy. Well, it also... Minus the spice. <laughs> I didn't need the spice. I didn't need the spice. I didn't need it. But I mean, if there's any spice in the next books, which I don't think there's going to be, because it is young adult, I wouldn't be mad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... For me, this book was uh, nostalgic in a way. Mm-hmm. Because you guys haven't read a few of these books that it reminds me of and it's like the red queen selection um dance of thieves and there was another one that it reminded me of so much and i hunger games hunger games yes hunger games almost divergent too because there's like the different classes classes system it just mm, 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 mm. you should like oh sorry you should share with the podcast what you told me about lauren (laughs) here we go again i don't remember what i said you told what she based this book off of because it's her favorite book oh dance of thieves Mm -hmm. oh it's lauren's favorite book is dance of thieves and i like this way more than dance of thieves just so you know lauren but it did give kind of like almost that same kind of vibe as Dance of Thieves, but yes, like they're they're running. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like literally gave the same. I was like, oh, I loved it so much when they were teaming up together. I mean, I don't want to give away Dance of Thieves, so if you haven't read Dance of Thieves, it just gave a lot off a lot of the same vibes, and I was screaming, screaming so much <laughs> so what were what was your guys's favorite part of the book oh, too many there were so many good just parts. anytime kai spoke okay i loved his chapters Peyton's chapters were great but i loved his, his chapters inner so much more dialogue and just how badly he was falling for her i could not i was squealing like a little girl the whole time i was reading this book i felt like i was <laughs> sounds so stupid and so weird I felt like I was like a little schoolgirl with a crush the whole time I was reading this book. Yes. Yeah. I was sitting here on this couch and I was reading. I can't remember what part it was. Oh, it's the part when they're in the rain. Oh. Oh, oh and I was just sitting there like this with my hand over my mouth. And my husband was like sitting on this other couch and he was just looking at me. And I was like, and he's like, what? And I was just like, I'm sorry, I'm blushing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I loved it. Oh, my favorite part. I don't. Mm, there's so many. There's so many. The nightmare. Oh, the mm. nightmare. The the bow scene. The where they're competing. Yeah. Oh, oh that one was. It was so reminding me of Princess Diaries too. <gasps> oh yeah. <laughs> and Chris Pine. I. Like, yeah. Yes, when he's like goes up to her ear and he's like whispering. Yeah sorry tending, we started right as the construction tending thing. each other's wounds i think kennedy's gonna say that one my favorite <laughs> why am i giggling i shouldn't giggle <laughs> he just makes me hot and bothered <laughs> um is probably when she's having like a panic attack and he <laughs> undoes her dress oh under the willow tree yeah yeah she can breathe yeah and then she's like can you help me put it back on and then he's like i have to admit i'm much better at taking this <laughs> off knee slapper <laughs> oh i was like <laughs> there were so many times reading this book when i'd be like i am rendered speechless yeah well and she would even say like i can't believe i feel this way like she was trying so hard to not fall and even though she knew she was falling but i'm like girl how could you how could you not the The things he says i think if there's any book that men need to read to take notes on (laughs) i mean i know that they're like enemies they're not so you know the banter but i don't think he was ever 
he was never like mean to her her enemy he yeah. he was falling from the moment he saw her mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. from the moment she saved him from that silencer he was like i need her no from the moment they collided it's like that tiktok mm-hmm. trend right now have oh, you seen that spinning around yeah i need to do that but i don't think cole would <laughs> i have you guys also seen you that? Wanna know who would kai kai would mm-hmm. kai would he would uh have you also seen the trend where the girl is like spinning and she starts running away no <laughs> and the guy like chases her it's just like a funny version of it <laughs> <laughs> he'd also do that one he would he would <laughs> with knives actually yeah a big fat joke i will say the tiktok kennedy posted the other day <laughs> the murder <laughs> what murder <laughs> that was the fan art on that if you haven't seen it go watch it it's the smiling one <sighs> yeah it's you don't so really good. see fan art like that no of i would pay people the mm. amount of times i this is kind of random but the amount of times I took po- pictures of my book because of the things Kai oh. would say. Let me just, can I rattle off a few? Yes, yeah, please, please do. If I'm please. to be her enemy, I want it to be because she loathes herself for wanting me. I want you. Rip. And then he calls her his toy. <laughs> because I don't tolerate my toys being played with. Oh, do you have, did you take a picture of the one with the, the soldier? Where he's like, you're not like one of my soldiers. No. I'll see if I can find it. What else did I take a picture then? Just keep it coming. I'm just loving Let's this. Let's see. I'm loving hmm. reliving it. Maybe it's far more fun to admire you when the action is mutual. Also, when she told him that he could touch her when she was sober and he wrote it on his hand. Yes. <laughs> is that your favorite part? I don't think you guys have said your favorite part. I can't. Well, I, I love the tending to the wounds. I really love the arrow scene yeah when they're competing i also kind of like their really like their dancing with in the forest mm. yeah <laughs> while they're in the trial yeah oh the whole first trial i ate that up i, I, I can't see find it this up. quote also here's another one every girl deserves something equally as pretty and deadly as they are i'm Kai is just written differently. He is just a different man. And here's the thing. The the banter in this book, I don't know if I've read a book with better banter. I don't think I have either. The thing is, is I didn't need any spice because nope. the banter was so good. And the tension. And just the little, like, the, the little touches. I was, like, melting at just those, the little, like, him circling his thumbs or over the hem of my shirt mm-hmm. why did that get me more excited than a <laughs> lot of other things i read like it was just so sweet so cute so oh my spicy without being spicy it was spicy um also just every time she described like his smile yes i was i was melting i'm like you're not even real and i'm melting because i can picture your smile and she's like his real genuine smile and i'm like that's so cute so cute Ugh. also he said a few times in the book he's like beasts don't get the beauty because he was compared he was saying he was like a beast and she was the beauty oh yeah. he was like beasts never get the beauty and i'm the beast i love him did you guys Even, have a did you guys have a least favorite part i only have one least favorite thing i could think of let's hear it i feel like i wanted more of her using her psychic abilities i feel like it was used in the beginning of the book for like when she was being a thief and like when she first got to the palace a little bit and then she didn't really i mean she used it in like by reading people in battle scenes a little bit like she would pay attention to how they would move But I wanted her to like use more of that because there was so much talk of everyone else's like powers. And obviously she doesn't have an actual power. She is powerless. But have you guys ever seen Psych? Yes. (laughs) I saw your good reads update. I was like, I was wanting her to pull some more like Sean Spencer little moments where she was like, just even looking at someone and 
I just wanted to see more of that psychic ability she had because I don't feel like we're gonna really I mean we might get it in the next book but with her trying to read people and I don't know I just wanted to see a lot more of that and see how good she was at I don't know maybe it's because she didn't like I mean she was really good at it so this is probably a stupid thing maybe she didn't want to use it so much so then it was like she would out herself that she didn't really have a power i don't know Mm -hmm. i just feel like everyone was using theirs i mean so much and i know her ability so to say is not the same as everyone else's but i was just hoping to see more of that because i thought it was really fun when it was just show how she was like trying to read people and i wanted more of that i felt like that was the only thing that i was a little like disappointed in but it wasn't like a deal breaker for me to not you know Mm -hmm. yeah what was your least favorite i don't know if i have one (laughs) hey i respect it (laughs) um i feel like my least favorite part probably is the the resistance kind of being thrown on her yeah Mm -hmm. i don't know I don't know if there was like a better way that could have gone about it, but I feel like she almost didn't get her like know what she was getting into, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. I feel like she wasn't briefed on exactly what was going to go down, and which would suck because I feel like she was a little bit in the unknown about, and she was the one that was like pretty much they were riding on, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But but maybe it'll come up in another book where Reggie texted us and said, I'm calling it that the resistance isn't good. Didn't you say that? But maybe it's going to come back around where it's like the leaders of the resistance maybe don't have the purest intentions and she ends up, you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like they're still good because they just don't want the ordinaries to die unless it mm-hmm. changes. Mm-hmm. But or maybe it'll be like, you know how in movies or books where you think the good guy is the good guy, but really they're not as good as you think they are and they're yeah, willing that's to do kind things of that aren't maybe the right thing mm-hmm. because they think it's for the greater good, you know? Mm-hmm. Maybe. I'm not going to say anything. Why? Because I can't. Okay. I, I just have PTSD from a different book. Okay. Yeah, don't say anything. Yeah. So I can't say anything. So... I think my least favorite part was, I don't know. I just don't really love pet names in books for some reason. And he used darling a lot. That would probably be my only thing. It wasn't yeah, like something I that hate, I hated, but it was just like he used it a lot. And I just was kind of like. It just yeah. kind of loses the flavor of how fun it I is like, when he says it, when it's said so many times. Like, yeah, we I talked about he, this in Serpent in the Wings of Night, how he says, there she is. Oh, yeah. Mm. Like every page. And at first it was like, that's cute and then it was like okay we get it i did i did love when he called her pay though pay and she loved it when he said it too Mm. it's so cute they are so cute i feel like i didn't mind it because i feel like he almost said it like in a sarcastic tone Mm -hmm. more than like like a term of endearment like you're my darling (laughs) i think he mostly said it like I don't know, in a more sarcastic way. So that's why I feel like it didn't bug me as much. But he, he did say that a lot. I mean, and that's just me being really nitpicky. Yeah. That's like the one thing I when, while reading that I was like, oh, it's not my favorite, but it's not something that I would say is horrible. Yeah. yeah. I will say one thing I didn't think I was going to like. The reason I was a little nervous to start this book. And I'm curious what you guys think about this. You know how like, your favorite we all have a favorite trope which is enemies to lovers you know Mm -hmm. there's also a thing that's included in a lot of fantasy books that i've started to notice a bit of a pattern and every time i start to read a book with this in it i kind of get annoyed and then i'm like why do i get annoyed because i love this so much and it's the trial competition i guess you can't really call it a trope but like books that have some sort of contest trial type thing you know you got hunger games you got there's like so many books that have that element to it and i was just like 
okay, we get it. They're going to be fighting it. But I, every single time I read a book like that, I love it because it just makes it all that more exciting. I was a little worried I wasn't going to love that. But I just feel like, because sometimes I'm like, do authors do that just because it works? Like it's, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind it, but it's also pretty much the hero's journey. It's literally in every movie, book. It's they face some sort of competition slash trial. They overcome that trial. It's literally in everything. I think for me, it's just like the arena aspect. Because like oh. some books will have like, it's like I understand the like overcoming a I understand the hero thing, but it's that we're going to put you in an arena and fight for something when like hunger games oh. type of vibe. You know I guess I don't get annoyed by that. Cause I, love I always it. start to get annoyed with it, but then every time I read it, I love it. So it's one of those things where it's like, I, I don't know. And I know not every book has that in it. I mean, if you think about it, there, I can think of a lot of books that do recently that i've read this year you've got throne of glass that has that element you have serpent in the wings of night this one so it is done iron flame yeah iron flame it is done but yeah i i wouldn't say it annoys me because yeah i think it works for a lot of authors and that's why oh, they yeah. do it but i will say it was really trippy because these guys already know this but my husband has never seen or read the hunger games and so we're currently going through the Hunger Games movies. And so I'm watching the Hunger Games while I'm reading this book. And so it was a trip for me because there really are quite a few little parallels between the two books, like between obviously Hunger Games and this book. But I think it just works. I think it's so successful. The authors just do it. Just do it. I and I mean, see how it could get repetitive. Sometimes I'm just like, oh, like when I was first starting this book, before I even really started, I knew it had this element in it. And I was like, and this is just me being a brat before I started this book. I was like, okay, it's going to be enemies to lovers. They're going to be thrown in some competition together. What's new? Like I've heard, I've, it's like, I think I've seen this film before, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? But I didn't mean to like get into no, too no, no. much depth about that, but I was very nervous to read this book because of those two things. I knew I loved those two things, but I was still surprised and loved it. I think for me, what she did so well is just their banter. I think that's what made this book so special was the banter. Mm Because, I mean, you think about all those... Because you're right. It's an overdone thing, the arena thing. And I probably would have been really bored and annoyed. But I think I just haven't read a book in a very, very long time that had that good of banter. For literally 500... How many pages is it? it's like 480 something for 480 pages the banter was i never got sick of it yeah i guess i also just i read this after iron flame and it was just so refreshing to literally understand everything that was going on like i could picture every single thing even when they they weren't together and there wasn't banter going on like i could picture exactly what the arena looked like what was happening how they were fighting i just felt like she did such a good job at making things simple but explained and put just enough details for me to understand literally everything i'm not confused by anything about this book and so i just think she did such a good job with that because it was just yeah oh i agree it was so beautifully written yeah like it was, i kept reading and i was like she's doing a good job i kept being like oh she's doing good she's doing good like i the internal dialogue the povs the yeah how she described everything was very well done it was enough enough descriptiveness that you knew what was going on, but not enough for you. Okay, how do I describe this? It was enough for you to understand what was going on, but not too much that you couldn't, like your mind couldn't create its own picture. You know how mm-hmm. in some books they over describe it and you're like, I'm trying to picture exactly what this author is saying and that makes it really hard. It was just enough to let your creativity and your mind run wild. Yeah. And the fight scenes, she did such a good job 
describing the fight scenes because I could see it just like a movie inside my head. Yeah. It was so good. It was so refreshing after Iron Flame. You're right. I also feel like, I mean, all the fantasy books that I've ever read have been this year. So I know I don't have like a ton under my belt, but that's mostly what I've read this year. I feel like if I could be any author, like write like any author, I would want to write like her Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for when it comes to fantasy. Just, and I don't know if it's because it's not even necessarily just like the plot or even like her mind. I don't know. I think it was just the way she wrote things that that's one of the things I love most about the book, but banter aside, like plot aside. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't, I know you've been following Lauren for a really long time, Michaela. But the vibe I get from her, from the little I've seen, is it's almost like she's a super fan of fantasy and she's read all of these different fantasy books and she's taking everything from all the good books Sorry, and putting it into baby one. just kicked me so hard and didn't feel very good. <laughs> my arm like jolted. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, I just, yeah, I just feel like she's a super fan of the genre and you can tell. Yeah. You definitely can tell. I just... Oh, uh, yeah. And she took, like, a little piece of, like, all these books and just made it into, like, pure perfection. How uh, long did she write? Like, when did she write this book? She, I think, wrote it, like, start to finish took, like, a year. Which is actually so good. Yeah. Um, Because... I can't remember when I followed her. I think I started following her when she had the like the manuscript and it took her a long time to like get it published well she self-published for the first book and as soon as she did that i pre-ordered it (laughs) but mike didn't come with the bonus chapters yeah i was gonna say if you guys have the original (laughs) copy like a true fan like michaela does in the second pub like when she was picked up by a publishing house right yeah they they released it again and it has a bonus chapter in Kit's perspective Mm -hmm. and a snippet from the first chapter of the second book, which we should talk about it. You read it, right? Yeah, I did. Mm. But I didn't read the bonus chapter yet. That's okay. We'll just talk about the chapter from the first book. I'm unwell. summarize it? Yeah. I mean, basically, wait, where is she? Is she at her house? Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. And Kai comes looking for her oh my gosh i can't oh here's the thing that actually made me so excited and michaela you texted me (laughs) when he says where is it oh it's on that part back is it it's a good thing you're not here because i haven't found my courage (laughs) (laughs) oh i love that man i (laughs) he might turn super evil but i doubt it but if he does i don't care (laughs) i will stand him for the rest of my life (laughs) just like imagine when they first actually see each other again like are they they're gonna be like they're gonna fight they're gonna have the most epic scene and it's gonna be so bad (laughs) and then they're just gonna look at each other and they're just gonna be like i think it's gonna gonna happen multiple times (sighs) it's gonna be so good that one line alone made me so excited Mm -hmm. for the second book oh learn the way you have with words she has me in a chokehold Mm -hmm. take my money she's so cute too like look how cute she is okay sorry adorbs no No. she's i think she's 20 she's 20 yeah she's really young she's so cute oh my gosh i think she's 20 i don't know 19 or 20 one of those two (laughs) okay you know how i told you guys i had something to tell you oh yes i'm so mad at myself so i was trying to figure out how many pages there were and i accidentally read the last line but the thing is i didn't know that it was kit what's the last line it's like go find padlin padlin <laughs> Pad- oh padlin 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 gray right is that her yeah. name mm-hmm. and i didn't realize it was kit because it says the king says and i thought i so i had i knew it was gonna happen on the end and i was so upset myself but i didn't know that it was going to be kit 
because i thought like she would have she did something to like piss off the king Mm -hmm. and then yeah but now she's pissed off both of them how about the flip of a switch with kit with kit when the resistance comes in and they lock eyes and he immediately just switches Ooh. okay the one i will say another thing i didn't really love was i thought it was gonna be a love triangle for a second and i was about to be real pissed but i knew yeah i knew there was no she was chemistry quick to be like oh yeah i'll mm-hmm. use him mm-hmm. real quick there wasn't any chemistry it's not like i think he liked her mm-hmm. but she never i don't know i guess i just didn't ever think that was going to be a love triangle for a second i thought it was gonna be and then she shut it down real quick shut it down (sighs) sorry i wasn't trying to yawn i can't remember what i was gonna say i'm really mad at myself all right so we tried to find fan casts and it's really hard because i have such like this picture in my mind and i can't i can't yeah i'm sorry we tried for a a good chunk of time to try and find fan cast but yeah i I just just don't think anyone no one can do kai justice no Mm -mm. or pay i was trying to find someone that was like younger could look good with silver hair i'm not saying no one has like really natural silver hair but and i kind of was picturing her face shape to be like like a i'm trying to think of this like a heart face shape like really small dainty high cheekbones cute little like chin yeah and i just feel like i couldn't yeah. find anyone who resembled what i thought i just couldn't pick anyone i feel like the, sorry i'm yawning if you guys yawn at home i'm so sorry <laughs> I feel like the only one we kind of had were like, oh, was like Kit. Who did we have? The guy in Summer I Turned Pretty. Gavin. Gavin Um, something. Casolino. Oh, yeah. Something like that. Or or Drew Starkey. Mm -hmm. Drew Starkey. I would want him to have a shaved head. And I don't know if Kit's supposed to have a shaved head. You know what? I think he could pull off the shaved head look. I think so, too. I mean, I don't think he has a shaved head, but. But I think he could do it. I mean, in movie and book, or yeah, movie and TV adaptations, I feel like they do take a little bit of creative liberty like you know mm-hmm. i doubt they'd be able to find someone with green eyes even though that's a big part that's of it like you just give them contacts contacts we did that <laughs> the actress can do it <laughs> just kidding um yeah so if you guys have someone please share share we'll try to we're trying to come up with people and making a tiktok about it but it's really hard we for kit we were like oh maybe jacob alordi but then you're we like no and then who was the other guy are oh, you talking about for kai yeah taylor oh, sorry, yeah. hold on it's the guy in red white and royal blue taylor i can't remember his last name i can't either let me look we just couldn't we just couldn't find anyone and his so. co-star I think he has black hair and purple hearts. It's Taylor Zakar Perez. Zakar Perez. We were like, oh, maybe he could work for Kai, but it's just not perfect. He has to have dimples, and we couldn't find anyone. Yeah. I feel like I have this, like, picture in my mind. And there's, like, an actor out there, but I do not know who it is. Mm -hmm. I don't know. (laughs) It's just so hard. I hate saying this with books sometimes because I don't want to like jinx myself and then like I don't know I would love to see this oh me too as a movie or like a tv show but I just feel like I think it'd be a good movie Mm -hmm. movie but it's always like scary to say that about a book you love so much you know but oh it's so good I would eat up every single scene same oh because once again it would be really good because it's not this is the problem i have with actar there's obviously spice in it and those scenes are gonna be so cringy 
You know what I mean? This is perfect because there's that tension, that banter, there's the action. I feel like there'd be a little bit of everything it for everyone. It would be done very tastefully. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't be cheesy. No. So I feel like I there's... just want to tell everyone I know to like read this book. Like I have a sister-in-law. She's never really read like fantasy books. And she, she would never read like Akatar or like Crescent City or Ashes in the Starkers. Like she wouldn't read any of those. But I know she would read like this like the more like young adult like divine rivals and i want her to read it so bad and i do know that there are some people out there that said obviously everybody has their own opinion some people said that this wasn't worth the hype or x y and z but honestly sometimes when it comes to fantasy books and i think some of the complaints i've been seeing from people is that it's too simple of a fantasy book but honestly sometimes that's what you need sometimes you need something that's not high fantasy doesn't have all these moving parts it's simple it's easy to understand and there's yeah yeah i just went from reading both the crescent city books and iron flame into this and i was i was nervous but i was not disappointed at all so me either oh and also this is her first book you guys, that's incredible. Obviously, she's not going to nail everything perfect with her first book. She's just going to continue to get better and better with every book she writes. I think it's... I can't rave about this enough. Like, I just love it. And I don't know. I think it's for all the girlies who just loved tropes. It was trope on trope on trope. And that's literally my favorite part of like, if you think about it, most of your guys' favorite parts in books or like are when a nightmare happens or when like the the MC is like wounded and like she literally gave that all to us in one book. We didn't talk about the braiding of the hair. Oh. Mm. <laughs> the hair braiding. <laughs> let's so just cute. read the let's just sit down and read the whole book again. Let's just go over every trope. You're right. She hit all of my favorite tropes. But the thing is that she did it well it didn't feel like it was this trope fest that was like okay we get it you're trying to add in all the tropes it was done so well it was it was i'm just so excited for the next book me too lauren we love you we're your biggest fans we are and we're on pins and needles for your next book Mm. if this ever becomes a movie adaptation lauren we will help you i'll help direct it we'll help direct it (laughs) because yeah, we're, so, we're so qualified for that i'll be a stunt double <laughs> i'll for be paid i'll be pay <laughs> all of us will be pay i'm too tall so i'm a tall girl you're reserved for other I'm characters i'm reserved <laughs> <laughs> kidding. i don't know i'm we're the same age <laughs> i don't know you already I, have a silver I, wig it's perfect <laughs> there we go there we go guys <laughs> Oh, I'm oh, just kidding. Man. I am reserved for a role that like, will never happen. If she has, if you have any like meet and greets coming up, oh, I want to come. <laughs> Where do you live? <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally Do you want to join joking. our podcast? <laughs> I'm totally joking. No, but I <sighs> am so, so glad that we read this book. And I'm thinking about all the book club books because, you know, it's almost December, reflecting a little on all the books that we've chosen for this podcast for our book club. And I'm like, I think it's my number one. I'm that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, it might be my number one pick over Iron Flame. I mean, over Fourth Wing, you guys. Mm. Here's the thing. There were some things in Fourth Wing that I was kind of like, Ugh. But this one, I, the only thing I didn't like is the darling thing. That's true. So, I don't know. I guess we'll see when we do our year recap. I feel like people are going to say Iron... No, Fourth Wing. Sorry. Just because there was a way more hype around it. Well, let's hype this book up. We are going to hype it up. Let's give it the hype it deserves. We have a bunch of TikTok drafts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I just seriously... It just feels so good. Like, people who don't read really are missing out. Because I don't even feel like... I'm not a huge movie person. But, like, I watch a movie and I don't feel like I ever feel this 
kind of emotion after watching a movie. Like books just can evoke so much more from you. I I just am on a high, I think, from a lot of the books. Like right now, I don't know what I'm going to read next. After that, I'm like, okay, I'm done for the year. Let's just call it good. <laughs> but I know. Starting Crescent City 2 was really rough after this book. I will say I... I'm very glad I decided to start Crescent City when I did, or I, anyways, never mind. We, I don't need to get into that tangent, but <sighs> what a time. What a time. What a time to be a reader. Mm-hmm. The best. So much to look forward to these next like six months. Even in the, yeah, the next year. Because mm, this next book comes out July. July. I have so many books <laughs> to read. I'm so excited. I'm so excited too. <sighs> anyways that's pretty much us just raving over lauren roberts uh we hope you guys felt the same way about this book if you didn't it's okay but we are obsessed and we will be talking about these next two books when they come like we're gonna be talking we will not stop we will not shut up about this book that's for reals no so, we will not thank you so much for tuning in is there anything else you guys wanted to add before I wrap it up? Nope. Cool. No. Thanks for tuning in. You can find us on Instagram and TikTok at what she's reading pod. Leave us a review if you haven't already. Your reviews mean the world to us. And we love you guys so much. Have a fantastic week. And we will see you next Wednesday. Bye. Bye. Bye.